uh, just a little bit of context about algorithms in general. Um, you know, what is an algorithm? Algorithm is a, a process that determines what you see on your timeline. The same goes for any platform, not just LinkedIn. In the early days of social media, to give you a little background, uh, basically the algorithm was in reverse chronological order, uh, which means that when you opened up your timeline, what you saw was the latest thing that was posted. But over time, social media platforms realized that that's not really great for retention and users were missing a lot of content. So they started tinkering with their algorithms and creating new ways to determine what it is you and your community sees on their platform. The algorithm really is the secret sauce to every platform. Uh, it's what makes LinkedIn LinkedIn and what makes it different from Twitter. Um, so they're not really going to tell you exactly how it works because they don't want the other platforms to steal their strategies. So everything that I'm going to be presenting you today is based on independent research, sort of Easter eggs that have been left from CEOs or just um, exp general experience from myself and other social media managers. But generally speaking, it's important to understand that algorithms are generally a black box. We don't know exactly how they work, um, but we do have a general understanding of how the process rolls out, just as I mentioned, from research and experience. Um, but for sure, uh, I can tell you with confidence. Oop, let me. Uh, okay, but for sure, content is king. So, what do I mean by saying that? The value that you add and the quality of your post is the only way to really beat the algorithm. You know, I can tell you everything there is to know about the algorithm, and that's not really how you become successful on social media. What you need to do is create good content. This is really secondary information just to help you and to inform you to better understand what exactly is happening. Um, but the algorithm is it's really complex and it's constantly changing. So it's almost uh, impossible to get ahead of it. It weighs a lot of factors. All algorithms on all social media platforms weigh many factors. And some platforms have multiple algorithms. We know that LinkedIn has two different algorithms, one for mobile, one for desktop. So when you open up your LinkedIn app, it's not the same content that you would see if you logged in online. It's very difficult to predict. Two people that are twins are not going to see the same thing on their feed. It's just impossible. So since it's constantly changing, the algorithm is constantly ranking posts and it's based on machine learning. It's there's only so much that we can tell you about the algorithm. I hope that makes sense uh, for everyone. So it is it is my belief that uh, it's better to focus on creating good content than obsessing about the algorithm. If you want to obsess about anything, you should be obsessing about your community and how to keep your community happy. Uh, that is really the best strategy moving forward to grow either your personal profile or to grow a company page. Uh, since the algorithm is constantly ranking posts and constantly um, giving you what you think you want to see. On the other hand, it's good to understand how it generally works. So uh, let's just take a look a little bit behind the scene of, of how it works in a nutshell. So this goes for any platform, not just LinkedIn. The general process is pretty much the same. When you post on social media, um, your post is going to be scored. It's going to be ranked. It's going to be given a, a number, OK? And after that, it's going to be shared with a very small percentage of users, of your followers or of users. Um, and like a ripple effect, based on the performance of that post, it's going to be shared more widely. The difference between a viral post and an average 
performing post is basically the size of a circle. So again, it's a ripple effect. If it performs well, it's going to ripple out a lot. For that first batch that get to see your post, um, so after it's ranked, that first batch of users, that small percentage, the algorithm does a very complex calculation to pick the right people. On LinkedIn company pages, that only reaches about 3% of your community on an organic post. For users, for your um, for your profiles, for user profiles, it's somewhere between 2 and 6%. So how does LinkedIn determine who these people are, this small batch, the first people that see your post? Let's talk about that now. Yep. Okay, LinkedIn, people you know talking about things you care about. This is LinkedIn's motto. It's reflected in their algorithm, which can basically be summed up into one word, and that one word is relevance. So LinkedIn is going to weigh many, many factors to determine what posts are relevant to you. It collects information on what you like, how you behave on their platform, the person who's posting, uh, info on the post itself to rank relevance. So when you log in to LinkedIn, the first thing that happens is the algorithm is going to sort of look at everything that's posted. It's gonna look what is on the menu. The next thing it's going to do is very quickly, obviously, instantaneously actually, it's going to rank posts based on relevance to you. And the post with the highest rank, with the highest score, is what you see first. That's generally how it works. So let's give that an example. If you and I were connected on LinkedIn, but we don't work together, we never engage with each other's content, um, you know, you post cat videos, I'm a dog photo person, that is going to send signals to the algorithm that you are not very relevant to me. And there's a low chance that we are going to see each other's posts, okay? So what does that tell you? Let's, let's look back at that first batch community, that first small percentage of people that see your post. The key is, and the strategy tip here, is to make sure that you are performing well with those people, not with everybody, not with the 750 million people on LinkedIn, but with that core community. Why? Because when you perform well with them, then that ripple is going to get wider. In LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, this happens within the first couple of hours of publishing. So if it doesn't perform well with that core community, it has no chance of surviving organically. So you want to post with them in mind. For example, if your community is largely, that small batch community is largely based in New York, you shouldn't be posting in Paris noon time, time zone. You know, post at the right time of day for that community. So just a very basic strategy tip. You also want to think a little bit about type of content. Like it on LinkedIn, you might have noticed that if you like polls, you end up getting a lot more polls on your timeline. So in that same vein, if your community likes photos, you should be posting more photos because the algorithm is going to rank the type of content that they like. And if that small percentage just so happens to be liking a lot of photos right now, that's more of the content that you should be producing on your feed. Another strategy tip is to be specific, okay? This is going to trigger the algorithm to catch um, that it's relevant to certain people. So it's generally speaking, good strategy to be more niche on LinkedIn than broad. I'll give you an example. Um, instead of posting just about marketing, which is a really wide topic, it's actually a better strategy to post maybe about social media marketing or influencer marketing or um, maybe content marketing. You see, it's just a little bit more specific and you are going to capture people that are interested in that topic. Okay, 
so let's look. Oh, let's look at how. Oh, having a little bit of a technical problem here. Oh, sorry. Uh, so let's look at ways um, that you can increase your post score. OK, uh, again, the best way to do it is to please your community and to post value added quality content. But there are ways that your posts can get punished on LinkedIn. We're talking about LinkedIn here specifically. So how to boost your post rank. The one thing I can tell you if you just want one takeaway is to stop being kind of spammy. Don't look spammy. LinkedIn doesn't like spam. Uh, and there's certain things that the algorithm is going to catch in your post and make it think that it's spam. For example, uh, it's a good practice to generally use between three and 10 hashtags, but no more than 10 hashtags because it's considered spam. You want to prioritize hashtags that have the most followers on LinkedIn. So we have learned, uh, for example, that uh, S hashtag SMEs has much less followers than hashtag small business on LinkedIn. So you want to prioritize the hashtags that have the most followers. Now, for our uh, LinkedIn all stars out there, you're probably thinking, how do you know which hashtags have the most followers on LinkedIn? Because it doesn't natively tell you, but I have an amazing Chrome plugin. I'm going to put the link in the chat that enables you to see how many people are following a specific hashtag. And again, after I finish this uh, sort of chat, I'm going to go ahead and post that in the chat so you have access to it. If you're watching this now on YouTube, I'll put it in the comments section or in the, the description box. Uh, another thing that is going to punish your post is if you over tag people. I see this all the time on LinkedIn and it drives me crazy. You only want to tag people on LinkedIn that you have full confidence are going to engage back. Why? Because if 50, you need 50% of the people that you tag to engage with your post or it will get punished by the algorithm. So make sure that you're not abusing the tagging on LinkedIn, that you're just tagging people that are active on the platform, that are, you know, that you're, you're pretty sure they're either going to like or comment back. Another thing that is uh, a common mistake on LinkedIn is sharing external links. LinkedIn hates this. All platforms hate this because it makes them lose money, okay? They don't like it when you share links on your post. Um, if you have to share a link on your post, I would suggest you post whatever it is you wanna post. Then you just click edit and you edit in the link after. Posts on LinkedIn have been, uh, posts with links on LinkedIn have been found to get up to 25% less reach. So if you, post and then edit it in later, it's it's kind of getting around the problem because it won't catch the link. Um, so try to avoid making your post link dependent, if you will. Uh, we talked a little bit about tagging and getting engagement from people. The best way to up rank right now on LinkedIn is through comments. There is an algorithm trigger where if you tag someone in your post and they comment within the first one or two hours of publication, it's going to significantly boost your post. Also, if you like or reply back to that comment very quickly, it's going to reward your post as well. Um, so comments are golden on LinkedIn. Try to get as many as possible. If you are trying to grow your personal feeds, if you are trying to grow your followers, I would highly recommend targeting people in targeting influencers in the community that you want and comment on their posts so that you are deemed relevant to the, to that person and to their followers. Commenting is very strong on LinkedIn. Uh, if you see an ICCWBO post, please comment. Do not share it, comment. Com shares on LinkedIn are worthless. They do nothing for reach. Um, so links are, likes are okay. 
shares are kind of a waste of time and comments are golden. So go for comments, comment more when you're on the platform yourself, solicit comments from your community. And uh, this is going to be a great way to increase your post ranking. And the last point of advice that I can give you is to just be on LinkedIn. Be a good LinkedIn user. Um, if you have an all-star rating, which means uh, a full profile on LinkedIn, uh, studies show that you get 1.5 more reach on your posts. I spoke in a last training session about how to get that all-star rating. Um, I'll go ahead and link that as well uh, in this comment section in case you missed it or if you're watching on YouTube. It is on ICCWBO's YouTube now. But essentially, if you get an all-star rating on your profile, it's going to help your everyday posts. You can also look up your LinkedIn SSI. SSI stands for Social Selling Index. Um, and it's basically your score, your grade, your personal grade. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but on LinkedIn, they used to score influencers and it was hidden. Like every influencer, every person that was posting on LinkedIn, they were given a certain score to determine how strong their personal brand was. And before it was it was private, but now it's actually public. You can all look and see what your SSI is. I'm gonna put the link also in the chat if you want to see how you are ranking in your industry and how strong your voice is on LinkedIn. And it has shown that people with a higher SSI score is are getting are getting more reach. So improving your personal brand, being active on LinkedIn is also generally gonna help your post performance for personal um, pages. Uh, I would also just say, even though you wanna be on LinkedIn a lot, just to remind everyone in case uh, you've missed it in my previous trainings, to not over post. You know, you wanna post once a day, that's really the max. If you post twice a day, the algorithm is going to um, sort of like put those two posts up against each other and it's going to try to pick which one is better because the algorithm will never show you um, the same person twice on your feed. So if you post twice in one day, it's only going to pick one or, one or the other to perform. And overall, it's just not a great strategy. So be on the platform, but don't be spammy. You know, don't be posting every five minutes. It's not Twitter. Twitter um, rewards you for over posting, but LinkedIn is quite the opposite. And this is why on ICCWBO's corporate page, um, we are very um, conscious and aware of what we're posting and making sure that we're posting priority campaigns that please our community. Um, okay, so that wraps up my presentation. I hope that that was clear without being too confusing. I'm going to go ahead and answer your questions now. And uh, oh, actually, before I answer your questions, just our, our challenge of the month, we like to do this uh, for the ICC pioneers uh, to get you guys, uh, you know, to motivate you guys to do and improve your everyday behavior on the platform. So our challenge this month is just to take five minutes a week to comment on posts and see how your community evolves. You know, comment on posts that on people that you deem influencers and you're going to see that your community will grow just five minutes a week and it'll make a big difference. So that is your challenge. Um, and now I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Let me see if I can figure out how to stop this presentation because I'm not great with this stuff. Oh. Uh. Okay. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Hi Linda. Um, I have a question, please. I was just wondering, um, so we mainly covered LinkedIn in your presentation. I appreciate that it might be like another presentation to talk about other social media um, algorithms, but would you be able to maybe, uh, I don't know if it's too long, but like, can you say a bit about maybe Instagram or I don't know, Twitter, um, maybe like resume it quickly if it's possible. Um, the it's, algorithms, anyway. It would be probably another meeting, but what you, for late, for um, Instagram, for example, the process is very much the same. Um, you know, you kind of you go on, you log online, 
It's going to look at everything that's out there and it's going to rank posts and give you posts based on your behavior and things that you like. The difference between one platform or another is what they're interested in. So um, maybe Instagram might be trying to push videos a little bit more. So they are going to upscore things that are videos. Maybe they're trying to push a new feature like reels, then they're gonna put more reels in front of you. Um, honestly, it's 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 different. They also have, I mean, on Instagram specifically, they're also going to be looking at hashtags in a different way. So the process is the same, but the way they incorporate it is different. I can say that Facebook and Instagram, um, they do things like track your behavior on other third party platforms based on what you're settings are on your phone. This is very controversial, by the way, if you haven't, if you haven't heard about it, Facebook is tracking what you're talking about on WhatsApp to know what to show you on Instagram and on Facebook. People don't like to be tracked across platforms, but this is how Facebook is making the majority of their money. Um, from what I know, LinkedIn doesn't do this. Uh, I could be wrong there, but Generally speaking, it's Facebook that's in the hot seat for doing this kind of behavior. So that is obviously going to affect ranking and post scoring. If they see that you are chatting with someone on WhatsApp, they collect that information to be able to dictate what it is they want to show you on Facebook. Um, but again, that is really kind of big brothery and creepy. And I don't know. And I don't know if that's still uh, I mean, it's they're definitely still doing it. And if uh, just a side note, if you don't want them to do that, you have an option now on the iOS, on, on your iPhones to to make sure that they're not tracking you across across different um, apps, if, if that's something that you want to do. And on Twitter, you can also opt out of the algorithm and see things in reverse chronological order. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Twitter is the only platform that allows you to opt out of their algorithm. Um, but again, it would be like a whole other training. I hope that gives you a little bit of a rundown, but I would probably just go off on a tangent if I had to keep <laughs> talking about the other platforms. Yeah, I know that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, okay, I see one here. Uh, you talked about uh, do not post too much uh, about how our actions seem. Sorry, Lee, I'm reading your question right now. You talked about uh, do not post too much. Uh, how about such as like, same logic, less is better. Is are less likes better than less posts? I, I think the question is um, you don't want to over post, but do you want to not over like on people? Exactly, yeah. On it's people's feeds. I see, I see. So um, you can like uh, on your, when you're scrolling through your feed, if you like, you know, um, sort of uh, mindless liking, it's not going to punish you or your profile. I mean, they like that you are engaging on LinkedIn in any way is better than zero engagement, but for sure comments are going to one, enable you to develop your voice because it's going to give you a little bit of authority on a certain topic and likes are not as powerful as a comment is. Um, so it's not that less is better. It's just that comments are better. I, I hope that answers your, your yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean, Stephanie, if I like more like climate change or SMEs, those kind of text posts, well, uh, well, I see in the future more those kind of posts in my feed as well, because as you said, the algorithm uh, is calculating what topic I'm searching for. Maybe those posts that I liked it previously, uh, those posts will come up uh, my when I connect next time. Uh, certainly, uh, for sure, if there are certain topics that you are targeting, the more you like them, the more you're going to see them. Uh, it, it's only one part of the equation, like I mentioned. It's also going to look at who is posting it. So if you like climate content only from ICC staff that you work with, it's going to likely give you more from that staffer uh, than you know, random climate content from 
X person posting it that you do not follow and you do not engage with. Uh, on Instagram, I can say so there's someone else asking about Instagram. For sure, it looks at what the subject and the content of the post is, and it's going to give you more of that. So if you are into embroidering or uh, some kind of DIY craft, it's going to give you a lot of that. LinkedIn is more about relevance in terms of the whole picture. So it's who's posting it, how close you are with them, the topic that they're posting about, and uh, the the sort of format, like is it a poll about climate change or is it a photo about climate change? Do you like photos better than polls? Then it's going to give you what you like more. It's just part of the equation, but if you want to fill more of your feed with X topic, then just comment on that kind of topic more. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? We have just a minute left for any last anything. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who joined. Again, just a reminder, this is going to be posted on YouTube later today on ICCWBO's YouTube. I'm realizing now that I didn't post those links I promised in the chat, but I'm going to do that as soon as I wrap up this meeting, and it'll also be on the uh, on the YouTube description. I post this stuff on my LinkedIn too, so if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, uh, you know, you can find me there and also follow hashtag ICC pioneers for any social media resources. Don't forget your challenge. Make sure you're commenting on your LinkedIn posts. Get that all star rating to increase your reach. And uh, and I'll see you in uh, in about two months. Every other month we meet for this meetings. But if you've gotten this invitation, then uh, you're on our mailing list. You'll get the next one, too. So thank you so much for for joining us today. Bye. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye. Bye, Stephanie. Thank Thanks you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.